first of all make sure you guys share the live around once again make sure you guys are letting everybody know that this is what's going on right now um make sure that you guys stay tuned in because today we're going to be talking about something that isn't really spoken about so do make sure to call everybody in make sure to let your friends know what's going on also make sure to subscribe to our youtube channel Akongomoklisto, and also make sure to follow us on facebook Akongomoklisto tv and also make sure to follow us on instagram Akongomoklisto. Also, keep an eye out because we will have an app coming out soon in the Google Play Store. And um, also, make sure to keep an eye out for that because our radio will be up there, Radio Congo Mucristo FM. So, make sure you guys keep an eye out for that. But in the meantime, make sure you guys are sharing this live around. Make sure you guys are letting everybody know what's going on. So, for today, we will be talking about um, how to not be. A crisis Christian for those who are currently watching and are just waiting for the message to start I'm gonna be talking about not being a crisis Christian but in the meantime make sure you guys share this live around make sure you guys let, let everybody know that this is going on once again don't forget to subscribe don't forget to follow our Facebook and our Instagram pages and also make sure to keep an eye out for our radio app radio Congo Cristo FM so once again for those of you who have tuned in thank you for tuning in and hopefully today you guys get um a little bit of what i have learned and also hopefully you'll be able to take from what has been said today so hopefully everybody has joined the live now and hopefully everybody has shared it around and for the moment what we're going to do now is obviously open up with a quick opening prayer Father God, I just want to thank you right now for once again, you've given me this opportunity to be here, oh Lord. I thank you for it. It's not only by my mind, oh God, but it's by your grace and it's through faith as well, oh Lord. I thank you for giving me the opportunity to be able to sit here and to be able to talk about your word. And you've given me the chance to be able to be humble within your presence, oh God. And I thank you for you've allowed me to have this platform where I'm able to speak to so many people about your word and about your wise commandments, oh Lord. I thank you once again, not only for today, but what you are doing right now, and what you have done yesterday, and what you will continue to do, Lord. In Jesus' name we so pray. Amen. So, you guys, for today's little installment, like I said beforehand, what we're going to be talking about is not being a crisis Christian. And what being a crisis Christian is, essentially, is running to God in a time where you are fearful only. And you never go to God for anything else. You only go to him in a time where you are afraid. So, that is what we are going to be doing today. I figured that this message would be fitting, considering the fact that we are now talking about, well, now a lot of our conversations are based around the pandemic that is currently going on. And a lot of our conversations are based um off of the situations going on around us off of the fact that we're at home we have absolutely nothing to do so i figured it would be a good idea to talk about how not to be a crisis christian because there is people who run to god when they are only fearful and then the minute that god comes through like he always does they usually go back to their ways in life and forget that god ever helped them come through in the first place so i figured that this me message would be suitable towards the conditions that we are going through right now and i figured that this message would be helpful for those of us who have been who feel who don't completely necessarily understand what has been going on around us so for today, once again, the theme is not to be a crisis Christian. One thing that we need to definitely understand with this is that yes, it does take a bit of fear or it does take um, distressful situations to bring us close to God because sometimes that's the only way some of us notice God. Some of us only tend to notice God when something goes wrong and where something doesn't go our way. And because of that, it can lead to neglect once God has fulfilled whatever it is that we needed him to fulfill. However, in this case, I'm going to show you, well, not show you guys, I'm going to talk to you guys about it and um, let you know what I personally think about it and what I have learned about it so far. So, 
because we're in this world a lot of things of the world can affect us negatively a lot of them do tend to distress us and these things can push us towards god there are some things that will take us away from god like certain temptations such as certain music you listen to or certain hobbies that you find enjoyable but there's also things that will push you into the direction of christ and usually those things can be both positive and those things can also be negative so it's a question of what kingdom do you belong to and what i mean by that is what kingdom do you belong to well essentially there's two in my eyes there's the kingdom of light essentially and then there's the kingdom of darkness and what you need to be able to do is realize which one are you from are you in one or the other or are you just dangling in between the two because of this we need to understand that there is a decision that has to be made and sometimes we do have to come to terms with whatever it is that we haven't been able to come to terms with before god has called us to go against the crowds and we are provided with so many opportunities to go against the crowd and to stand for what we believe in but a lot of us are afraid to do this now what i mean by this is that god has given us, god has called us to go against the crowds to go against the crowds what i mean by go against the crowds is essentially what you should do is essentially be able to stand up for your religion what you should be able to do is essentially not even just your religion i personally believe it's a lifestyle being a christian and being able to go against multitudes of people who don't believe what you believe in being able to go against multitudes of people who don't believe what you see to be true and what who don't believe what you see to be right it's definitely something that we're capable of doing but it's something that a lot of us are afraid of and usually when it comes to a moment of distress or crisis for example the crowds and those large masses of people tend to turn against you and ask you where is your god that is a question that a lot of us essentially may be getting and because of that question a lot of us don't know how to answer it a lot of us feel like we don't know how to respond back to that like if somebody used to ask where's your god in the moment where we need him most in the moment where there's so many people out there suffering in the moment where there's so many people that are ill there's so many people that are confused that are lost that are grieving that is the main question that i believe a lot of people would be asking you especially if you have made it known to them that you are a christian but for those who didn't grow up to be a christian for those who aren't a christian now for those who don't have any type of lifestyle that relates to christ whatsoever what do they think in this hard time some of them may be thinking that this may be a reason to validate this being some a lot of people might believe that because the coronavirus is going on right now that this is more of a reason to validate the fact that they don't believe in god they may see this as an excuse to validate the reason of why they don't believe but then for other people it may be an excuse to not necessarily an excuse but it may be a reason to run to god they feel like they have lost all hope they see that it is not just their nation but they see that it's the whole world struggling they see that this is a global pandemic they see that this is something that everybody is struggling with and this might push them to god and if it pushes them to god then let's hope that they stay there but a lot of times the case is that people run to god and when god fulfills whatever it is that he needs to do and when god does whatever it is that his child has been asking usually they run away that shouldn't be the case um what you need to think about also is do your core values conform to the world or do they conform to the word of god because of a lot of the times that we are going because of the time that we are going through right now what we need to think about is if i were being is if our values the things that we think about most conform conform to the world or if they conform to god what i mean by conform is if they fit the agenda if they mold into a different agenda as in say for example being of the world if i was to conform to the world what i'd be conforming to is 
the worldly lifestyles, the drugs, the cigarettes, the alcohol. But if I was to conform to a godlike atmosphere or if I was to conform to the word of God, what that would be would be me leading a life like Jesus did, would be me moving forward, would be me influencing others in a positive light, would be me showing the Holy Spirit that I have and radiating it to radiating it to other people around me. What we need to think about is am I sturdy? That is a something that that's a question that I believe is very undermined. A lot of people don't ask themselves if they are sturdy. A lot of people don't ask themselves, well, am I certain? Am I ready? Am I am I fully devoted? Am I fully dedicated to God? That is definitely a question that one needs to ask. Am I half and half? Am I flexible? Am I sturdy like a chair? Or am I constantly being bended into all different types of shapes like a sun lounger, you know? Or am I swinging freely like a hammock? And that's one thing that we need to think about. Definitely in this moment of crisis, we need to think about how we are spiritually not only spiritually but how where we are mentally we need to be stable and we need to be certain and we need to be ready in god's word so one thing that god does not want is a lukewarm christian definitely if you're going to run to god in the time of help and you leave better that than you staying there and pretending to be for god 100 percent and pretending to deny the fact that you aren't 100 percent for god it's better that you leave rather than hurt god even more and pretend to be something that you aren't and um, god doesn't want lukewarm christians so it's it does say in the bible that if you're neither hot nor cold that he will spew thee out of his mouth so definitely it is something that needs to be considered something that needs to be checked is whether or not you are 100 percent. and if you're not 100 percent, then definitely do reevaluate your core values reevaluate whatever it is that you feel like may remove you from the presence of god reevaluate whatever it is and ask yourself once again do your core values conform to the world or do they conform to the word of god um we need to be steadfast christians we need to be certain we need to be assertive and we need to be able to say anything that comes to mind if it's godlike without hesitating we need to be able to say anything that revolves around god without hesitation without a fear without a panic without a, a second glance without a second thought because we should be assertive we should be certain so how does this fit in with the fact that we shouldn't be crisis christians well crisis christians in my terms are people who tend to run to god in a time of need and when god finally fulfills whatever it is that he needed to fulfill they never go back to thank him and they leave immediately they never come back and the only time if they do come back the only time they do come back is usually when there's another problem that arises or when there's another issue that they need fixing with or if there's another dilemma that they need help with that's what a crisis christian is to me and that's something that a lot of people tend to take pride in it's not necessarily a good thing because not only do you take from god without giving anything back you take from your father and you haven't offered anything back it's also it's greed i believe it's greedy because you haven't shown gratitude where necessary you haven't shown credit where necessary and you have taken the benefits of what another person has reaped and sold for you and you have taken advantage of that and you have left and you haven't had the common courtesy nor the decencies to say thank you so for me that's what a crisis christian was or is and definitely in this time that we are in now it is unfortunate that there is a lot of cases out there where this might be the case there's a lot of people out there that may feel like yes i am a crisis christian they may not acknowledge it and they may not admit it but there's a lot of people out there that believe that what i'm doing is fine me running to god in a time of need and then leaving him completely and abandoning him and not thanking him and completely disregarding the plan that he has for me is okay there's some people that think that but what we need to do is hopefully come to terms with the fact that being a crisis christian does exist and what we need to do is even educate ourselves on the fact that crisis christians do exist that's what we need to come up with so um 
so once again going back to the term of crisis christians definitely it is something that is i believe is an issue um another issue that comes along with this even if people don't admit to it is are these crisis christians actively pursuing god that is one of the reasons i call them crisis christians because the minute that god has come through they leave and people who actively pursue christ aren't crisis christians people who actively pursue a relationship with god people who actively pursue a desire of wanting to learn what god has in store for them that is not temporary that is long term and for it to be for those people to willingly have it occur long term shows that there is sincerity in their efforts to develop a relationship with god so one thing definitely is that god doesn't waste time on creating things and if he doesn't waste time creating things then know that whatever it is that he has planned for you was not a waste of time although the way you have came to him was difficult although the way that you have come to him was not the way that he was expecting god does things for a reason everything has a time a place and a season and that is why god does things and um, for this though for things to happen in a time place and a season purpose also needs to be there first and one thing that everybody has whether you're a christian or not is a purpose and god has a purpose for whoever it is that he encounters god has a purpose for for each and every single person that he's created and your most what you must know is that your purpose is your own divine and unique dna now what i mean by that is that purpose varies perfect purpose is very very different purpose isn't something that can be copied a lot of people have a purpose every single one of us do in fact every single one of us even those watching the live right now and you may feel like you don't have one we all have a purpose the only difference between us and the person next to us is our purpose our purpose is like dna it cannot be copied it is unique it's original it's peculiar it's something that others shouldn't have to try to wreck their brains in in order to understand it because it's not meant for them to be understood it's meant for you and god only to be to understand that essentially because your purpose is so unique because your purpose is for you definitely you need to understand that god does have a plan for you regardless of the way that you came to him if you came running to him with open arms to say thank you god because you have essentially saved me thank you god because you have rewarded me with this you have blessed me with this or if regardless of the fact that you're running to him because you're upset you're crying and you're wondering god why god why have you done this why have you leashed this upon your people why have you done so and so regardless of the way that you go up to god just know that god has a purpose for you so um mm, so definitely what you need to do is allow yourself to be connected to your purpose by the spirit of god and for those again and once again who haven't understood what essentially being connected to your purpose is, is that you should be able to identify you should be able to know what it is you should be able to understand what essentially your purpose is so mainly where i got most of my ideas just there or most of my beliefs from right there were from romans chapter 12 um verse 2 so being a crisis christian romans chapter 12 verse 2 kind of gives you an idea of how people would be conformed and where they would get their ideas of being conformed to so it says do not be conformed to this world but be transferred by the renewal of your mind that by testing that the that by testing you may discern what is the will of god what is good and acceptable and perfect if you are able to have the spirit of discernment and that should be able to help you differentiate whatever it is that is going on that should be able to help you differentiate that when you go to god whether it is a time of need uh, you should be able to differentiate that when you go to god is it a time of need or is it a time of gratitude and there's a lot of cases where usually it is just simply because it's a time of need one thing we need to take note of and one thing that i absolutely love saying is that god isn't a genie god is not a genie so we shouldn't be saying give me give me give me god isn't 
Santa Claus for us to constantly keep asking for him this and for that that is something that we definitely need to take note of and that is something that I feel like a lot of us haven't completely understood and I'll say it again God is not a genie so stop saying give me give me give me so definitely in these cases right here where you feel like you may be a crisis Christian well what you need to do I believe is renew your mind and how does one renew your mind well you read your word regularly your word as in the bible when you continuously read the bible it renew not only does it renew your spirit but it does renew your mind as well because what you have to understand is the difference between the bible and the difference between the times that we're going through now is that the bible isn't temporary if we go to isaiah 40 if we go to isaiah Isaiah 48 so right Isaiah chapter 40 verse 8 it says that the grass withers the flower fades but the word of our God will stand forever that right there just proves to us that the Bible is eternal that the Bible isn't going to fade away anytime but the situations that we're going through right now will so it just proves that if you are running to God in a time where you feel like you need him to come through for you if you're coming if you're only running to god in a time where you feel like you need him to create a miracle say for example if you're running to god only because of the coronavirus and the minute that it's gone you forget about him what you need to understand is that god is not temporary god is a forever thing god is a not a concept god is forever god is the creator and the father and because he's the father he is forever he's eternal it's not something that is temporary and he will never be temporary to be quite frank but this coronavirus is so if you are willingly running to god and you're making an investment into god and you're begun praying to god because you want him to ease lockdown or because you want him to alleviate the pressures and the stress of this whole pandemic or whatever other issues you have in your life then it's worthwhile staying with god because there's many many other things that he could do than just ease lockdown there's many other things that god can do than just remove coronavirus there's many other things that god can do that could also benefit not just you not just the people around you not just your loved one not not just your neighbor who you don't know but future generations there's so many things that god can do that can benefit so many other people you just don't know it so definitely know that god's word is eternal definitely understand that because god's word is eternal because god's word is there forever that it is of use that it can take the way the stress that whatever stress that you're feeling it can't take alleviate the pain that one may be feeling especially during a time like this it can't alleviate the pain that one may be feeling in a time where they feel like they're grieving in a time where people are losing lives in a time where it is very difficult to continue to move on definitely do know that your word is there not just there to teach you but it is also there to reassure you if we look at second timothy chapter three Mm -hmm. if we look at second timothy chapter 3 verses 16 to 17 if we look at yeah so second timothy chapter 3 verse 16 to 17 it lets us know that all scripture is god breathed out by god and profitable for teaching for reproof for correction and for training in righteousness and then verse 17 goes on to say that that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. If we look at verse 16, it lets us know that once again, the Bible is there for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. But what we need to highlight essentially right there is that it's used for teaching. Teaching us how not to fear in a time of chaos. Teaching us how to be firm in our faith in a time of disorder. Teaching us how to remain firm in god's vision in a time where nothing is certain teaching us how to remain how to become stronger teaching us how to achieve our goals in a time where we feel that we we can't so though that verse right there second timothy 3 16 to 17 right there lets us know that exactly what 
God wants us to know that the Bible is to teach us, that the Bible is there to provide us with whatever it is that we are in need. It is not just that you need to run to God and expect for God to fulfill your answers. It's not just the case where you should run to God and wait for him to give you answers, to give you what you want. Essentially, you can get all your answers that you need in the Bible. What you have to do is just search for it. And a lot of us are lazy to search for it, which is the unfortunate case. But do know that whatever answers you're looking for, whatever it is that you're trying to seek from God, just know that it is in the Bible. The Bible is, is an immediate answer for those who feel like God isn't responding, although he is all the time, or although he is listening all the time. So sometimes it's not the case of where god has to speak sometimes his book will speak for him and that's something that i feel like a lot of people don't understand but definitely do acknowledge it now that sometimes not everything has to come from god because it's already been written in his word and he doesn't need to repeat himself twice so definitely do take heed into what was said just there just know that in a time where a lot of people are fearful just know that you can't run to god only for your problems know that you cannot run to god just because you want to just know that god isn't a genie not even just in the time of crisis but know that you can't run to god for whatever it is that you want see it's like a re in a relationship you see with your father and a child between a relationship with a father and a child what a child does is although they may ask and the father may give a child needs to come back and say thank you to their father but a lot of us don't do that a lot of us tend to take and we leave and that's something that it needs to be fixed that is an issue that a lot a lot of us need to take control over so definitely do know that you seeking for god for menial things you see you're looking for god simply for him to provide you with the latest car Are you looking to god simply so he can provide you with with a getaway out of this lockdown or a getaway out of quarantine or a getaway out of coronavirus isn't necessarily ideal because all of this at the end of the day is temporary and in the long run god's word is eternal god's word is permanent this isn't permanent this isn't set that is something that we definitely need to understand see heaven and earth will pass away and everything in earth will pass away eventually but god's word will never pass away once again heaven and earth will pass away take note that it's everything in earth not just not just everything outside of it but it's everything in it as well and note that god's word will never pass away note that the bible in itself will never pass away that is an eternal thing that will never age it, it's timeless it can't be aged you can't put a label you can't put an age on it because it's never going to age it's there forever so hopefully you guys understood what was being said today once again just to take brief note to not be a crisis christian is definitely something that is hard a lot of us don't realize that we're doing it but once again for those who are quickly jotting down notes what is a crisis christian a crisis christian is somebody who runs to god in a time of need and only seeks him when they are looking for him to fulfill their menial deeds or their menial labor um what do crisis christians usually tend to do well they usually tend to simply ask god they'll say give me give me give me but one thing we need to remember once again my favorite saying is god isn't a genie so don't say give me give me give me also how can we reduce our crisis stage how can we reduce it well reduce it as in how can we get rid of that mentality of where we feel like we can only run to god 24 7 um when there's a crisis well what we should do is meditate on the word what we should do is look at our word what we should know is that the word is there to give us immediate reassurance we shouldn't be running to god immediately expecting him to give it us whatever it is that we're seeking for straight away what we should be able to do is look at the bible is look at the word and it will give us tips and steps on how to achieve whatever it is that we want God to achieve. Because it is not a case of where God should simply just give it to us. It is us we should be able to work for it. We should be able to 
strive for it because if you really want something you will strive for it so if you are going to god because you really want something you should be able to run to god and strive for it as well as well as that note that god's word is eternal and every single situation that is going on right now is temporary note that the coronavirus pandemic is temporary note that the fact that your eviction notice is coming out is temporary note that the fact that your debts that have yet to be paid are temporary note that none of that is permanent and the only permanent thing in all of that is the bible note that the only permanent thing in all of that is god's word so that's all i have to say for today you guys I hope you guys did enjoy this message and I hope you guys understood the full capacity of what I was trying to say. I know there was a few moments where I did get jumbled up and I didn't necessarily know how to word it. But hopefully you guys got the concept. Hopefully you guys got the gist. Once again, definitely my favorite quote. Do you know that God is not a genie? So don't say, give me, give me, give me. Because although he is your father, fathers do have their limits. And they do deserve the same respect that your father here on earth would. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed this message. Once again, for those who have watched, thank you for watching. I hope you guys understood what was being said today. Also, make sure to check us out on our YouTube once again. Make sure to follow our Facebook. Make sure to follow our Instagram. Also, make sure to keep your eyes peeled because we will have our app coming out soon at Radio Congo Mokristo FM on Google Play. Um, you can also Google it and our website is up with it playing 24-7. So before we obviously close we're just going to give a quick closing prayer father god we thank you right now lord for once again your word has been spoken today oh lord i pray that your will has been done through whatever it is that is being said today oh god i ask oh god that your hand may fall not only upon myself oh god but whoever was watching oh lord may your people oh god learn the difference between a devoted christian and a crisis christian oh lord that there's a difference between them oh lord and may they be able to come to terms with whichever one they are oh god may they not be balancing in between your two kingdoms may they not be hot nor cold but may they be hot for you simply oh god may they be the one oh lord i pray lord that your will may be done oh god may your glory fall upon us may those of us who are watching be protected oh god and may those of us who are not only those who are watching oh god be able to remain with you oh lord in jesus name we pray amen right guys that's all that we have for today's video once again thank you guys in for tuning make sure you guys stay safe make sure you guys stay healthy and we will catch you guys some other time god bless Bye.